Welcome, Felix. This is Felix Wert of the German Party for Biomedical Rejuvenation Research. And we have spoken in prior years back when it was the Party for Health Research. So could you tell us a bit about your rebranding and the ambitions behind it? Yes. So last year we had a strategy change. Uh, the party was founded in 2015 and as you said, uh, initially it was a party for uh, health research um, and we promoted the, the hastening of uh, the development of medicine that will prevent uh, the disease of old age like Alzheimer, cancer and so on. And uh, we didn't talk about life extension, we just uh, said that it's about uh, preventing disease. And everybody thought that it's a good idea, that uh, people that we asked, nobody had something against it, but um, we didn't get much attention because there's already so much research going on in this field against cancer and Alzheimer. And they said, oh, okay, so the big parties in Germany, they already do this. So, so why do we need another health research party? And um, also it was misunderstood a lot because party for health research, everybody thinks, uh, understands something different with uh, health research. Uh, everybody has a different idea what health research is. So, um, but uh, it was always about uh, promoting rejuvenation research, the so sense approach, the repair approach, so that uh, yeah, we always wanted uh, to help to hasten the development of medicine that will also let us live longer. But um, yeah, we, we initially we avoided to, to say that explicitly because we wanted to avoid uh, like uh, questions about things like overpopulation. And so, on. And, uh, so last year we did the strategy change. Now we. Uh, we especially say that it's about life extension and rejuvenation uh, medicine uh, so that people can live uh, potentially maybe for thousands of years uh, if you consider the longevity escape velocity and um, yeah now we focus on that so in our election posters we say now that uh, so one of our election posters has in big letters written the question where do you want to live in 800 years and uh, the election posters also say that it's about the development of medicine that will maybe let people live for thousands of years and this gets, it's very provocative but it gets a lot of attention from the general public and also from the media and uh, so a lot, many more people go to our website or many more media outlets uh, interview us and on our website we explain the solid science behind it. So we explain the, the sense approach, the hallmarks of aging, we, we link all the relevant uh, sites, uh, also other sites like Lifespan I.O. or Fight Aging or yeah, yeah. So, so um, we get, um, so and, and also the media, if, if the media um, interviews us, we, we can also explain to them that it's not like a joke because many people initially think, oh, it's a joke when we talk about living that long but then we can explain the science uh, when they ask about it and um, from my experience um, they understand it and uh, they take it seriously and yeah, yes. most of them are interested in it and yeah and now, now a lot, lot of people of course or almost everybody asks yeah but what about overpopulation and the pension system that will collapse and uh, won't it get boring and so on. But uh, so we also address those uh, questions on our website and, and give good answers, uh, possible, good possible solutions uh, to those imagined uh, problems that might occur. Yes, and I am very much in favor of this 
new strategy. Of course, as you know, we have been pursuing that kind of very open approach about our objectives in the U.S. Transhumanist Party since its founding. Indeed, it is the case that this can sometimes attract controversy or objections, but those objections exist anyway, and they would exist even for a more, let's say, euphemistic version of the same set of proposals. It's just that if one is open about one's goals, then people can voice those objections and they can be discussed and debated and we can offer our responses, our counter arguments, and hopefully advance the discussion in that way. So I very much think that this new strategy is likely to get a lot more attention and a lot more media coverage and shift the Overton window of discourse. Now, I also know that you are a candidate for the European election in 2024. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yes, so the party exists since 2015 and we participated already in 20 elections in Germany. So those were like, so we participated in the last European election and the last two federal elections in Germany and then in 17 state elections in Germany. And in the la so in the, on the federal level and on the state level, there's a 5% threshold. And that means that you only get as a party into parliament if you get at least 5% of the votes. But at the European level, at the European uh, election, there's no threshold. So you get your first seat uh, once you get zero, at least 0.5% 0 of the votes. And uh, at the last European election, 2019, we got 0.2% uh, of the votes. And um, so next year there's a uh, European election again and um, I think the, the, the reason why we didn't get more votes yet is because we are still very unknown because there are a lot of small parties in Germany and a lot of people don't uh, care so much about the small parties, they don't know about them. Um, so once we get better known I think we have a very, very good chance to get much more votes and there's a realistic chance that uh, we get at least one seat in the next European election, which is next year in June, I think. So last, last time it was in May, I think this time it's a little bit later. Um, yeah, I think in June. So, um, yeah, uh, having a seat uh, in the parliament, uh, of course, would help a lot with the advocacy. Um, because, for example, uh, you could give talks in the parliament as a politician, and you could do lobbying, like directly in the parliament, and also we could hire people that do advocacy full time. I mean, if you, if you have a, a seat in the parliament, if you're a parliamentarian, you can hire people for 20, about twenty thousand euro a month salary. Um, to work for you full time and do advocacy, and yeah, so this is what would help a lot and and make uh, the work much more efficient. Um, so that's that's our hope that next year we will be in the European Parliament. Indeed, and based on your vote totals back in 2019. It seems that you're in striking distance. You would just have to a little more than double your previous vote total. And you have already been engaging in a lot of impressive activism, your various posters about the diseases that are exacerbated by aging and the poster with Aubrey de Grey. I think they did make an impact on the people in Germany. And I'm curious what advertising messaging approaches you plan to pursue for the 2024 European Parliament election to raise that level of public awareness further. So we made a very good experience. Uh, this, so this year there were, uh, we participated in two state elections in, in Berlin and uh, Bremen. And 
now we are in October. We participate in the state election in Hesse again on October 8th this year. So this uh, election campaign will also be a very good promotion for the European election to get more known for that. And so with our election, new designed election posters, for example, with a question where you want to live in 800 uh, years or another um, election poster asks uh, how old do you want to get, like 80, 100, 500, or so you can vote now, you can choose now, you know, with your vote. Or another poster says that like over 100,000 people die every day of aging and, and things like that. I mean, those posters really catch attention and the, the people just take photos of those posters and share them on their social media accounts. That's our experience. So um, we will probably keep the strategy that was this year already a success and uh, continue to do that. And yeah, we hope that uh, we, we get more donations so that we can uh, buy more election posters so that we can hang them up everywhere in Germany and uh, yeah, get get seen um, by, by as many people as possible and yeah so and I, I wanted to add to the to the results so, so there were already three uh, state elections where we already had 0.5 percent of the votes so that it's not an impossible goal to, to get 0.5 uh, percent at the European election. Of course, we would need the 0.5% German-wide, and so far we only had it on state level, but still, it's not impossible. Yes, indeed, and I'm sure those posters are memorable for the people who come across them because they generally don't see those messages from right. politicians, right. and here is a party that is promising something radically different and radically better, at least I hope that many people will see living dramatically longer as radically better, but at the very least, they will remember you and they will engage with these ideas, which is the most important element of this. Of course, if you do get elected to the European Parliament, that would be an immense boost in visibility. And I think many media outlets, many academic writers are going to cover that event and that will further advance our movement. Now, I'm curious if somebody wants to help your efforts, what can they do? And perhaps your answer will differ depending on whether that person is in Germany or whether that person is in another EU country or whether that person is outside the EU, but what are some possibilities? Yeah, well, so we are interested in all kinds of col collaborations, basically. Um, so, because like, also prior to elections, when more people come to our website and, and yeah, read that, so we link to all kinds of other sites. So, we are also happy to link to other advocacy um, organizations or other things that are going on in the longevity field. Um, that, that want uh, to have more views and um, yeah, you, you can help. So you can go to our website. It's a it's a German website. So it's verjungsforschung.de. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you, you can just Google uh, German Party for Rejuvenation Research and you will find us there. Uh, and but but we also have uh, so our program and our election program we translate it into English and also our statutes. So on this website you, you also find uh, the things in English, you can read it in English. Um, yeah, but yeah, the most important things we, we translate it into English. And um, yeah, so people can, of course people can donate, you know, for our election campaign. Um, people that don't live in the European Union can donate a maximum of 1,000 euro per year per person. Or, yeah, that's the limit. Um, and, yeah, and we, we are interested in all kinds of collaborations, basically. And, and you can become a member of the party, the membership is free. 
and you don't have to live in Germany. Okay. And if you are like a scientist in the aging field, uh, you could also join our advisory board. Um, so we have a scientific advisory board and a strategic advisory board. And the more people we have on there, the, the better it looks uh, for the general public, right? Because if they see, okay, is there's a party for, so, so are they telling, you know, are they, uh, what are their credentials, you know? Are they, is it serious what they're talking about with the sensor approach? And, and well, what is hallmarks of aging? Is it even like, <laughs> a serious uh, thing, you know, and but if they see, okay, there's like scientists who support this, who stand behind it with their name, then uh, this, this also helps, yeah. Yes, indeed. Well, thank you for putting forth all of those suggestions. Hopefully some of our viewers will explore your website and consider the possibilities that you put forward for offering support. Now, You've been here for the first two days of Longevity Summit Dublin. What are your impressions and perhaps some of the most noteworthy aspects that you've observed thus far? Well, there are more people attending than last year. That's a good thing. So uh, it grew quite a lot. And um, yeah, so far I... I met a lot of interesting people that I didn't know before. Even people that live in my hometown and <laughs> are in the longevity field and that I didn't know before. So it's uh, very nice to see that the field grows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and given that you're meeting people from your hometown, perhaps that will expand your base of support as well. discuss that and we will continue to, to discuss that yeah, to work together excellent well i'm glad that the summit is proving to be fruitful for you and your efforts and i hope you enjoy the remainder of it as well thank you thanks for interviewing me indeed thank you felix